and successful. Maybe that's a category five, and it's not a category one because they didn't actually make it. And category six, investigation. Everything that doesn't fit, uh, you don't know what's happening, you need to check it out more. These, these categories are roughly based on NIST guidance that came out before. Um, most of the larger search that have evolved over the past decade or so have come up with different variations of this. This is U.S. search take on what NIST came up with. Um, and again, the larger organizations um, like DOD CERT or, or any other um, federal level CERTs or even other nation CERTs, they kind of all have modifications of this. The key is this is just a way to respond to things. Okay? So you want to understand what's important in your environment. And this is roughly based on the attacker's goals and what level of impact they were able to have on your network. So being able to get access to your systems or your data or your users. Whether the user responded to a phishing email and sent their username and password back to these guys. That would be unauthorized access. Even though they haven't taken advantage of it yet, that username and password is exposed. Okay? Uh, denial of service, typically what these guys want is only if it's successful denial of service. Only if it actually happened do these guys care. So as far as whatever U.S. CERT is, has purview over, they only care if it's actually happened. They, it worked. Um, installation of malware or post-infection beaconing, uh, intrusion, uh, uh, inclusion rather, into a botnet, anything of, the, of those nature, that, that's category three. They only care if it actually worked. If your antivirus caught it, they don't want to know and they don't care within the purview of, of what they're reporting. Um, your management will dictate generally what you're going to want to report and how you're going to take action on it. Your leadership will build that type of information system, those types of uh, processes in. They'll finance you for those processes, I guess. But what's important here is understanding that uh, it, it's up to your environment. So if you're starting this out, low, no cost, free, whatever, you need to use this as a way to justify what you're doing so that you can possibly get more money from management and leadership, to show impact, to show that you're actually catching things, to make it actionable. Okay, if you can show that it's actionable and you can show that other organizations think this is important, you can use this publicly available guidance and you can say, look, the U.S. CERT thinks this is important, maybe we should too. So uh, getting into the analysis of stuff, uh, you've got, I didn't do a little demo for this, but um, if you want to <laughs> analyze something such as malware, um, you might you see an alert pop up on your analyst system. Uh, I don't know malware check in. Who knows? Uh, you want to look at the network capture and see what's really happening. Maybe take a look at the user agent. Look at all these different things to provide information on what's happening. And you might have to research what that traffic means. What um, you might have to look up the uh, external IP it's beaconing out to, or maybe what someone downloaded from. And then you, if you can, you want to have firewall log access, look at firewall log, you want maybe proxy log, that will help uh, determine what's happening. You want to look at the AV log on the system itself, um, hopefully uh, it caught it. Or if it's beaking out, it probably didn't catch it. And you want to see the system log, see what maybe has been changed, uh, maybe there would be something that could help you in there. All that stuff is context, it provides context to the uh, IDS alert that originated the thing. Um, and you want to talk to the user, find out what happened. Did they click on an email? Did they download something they thought it was a great game or something like that? Um, and then you do incident response dealing with that malware. Yeah. Yeah, this process is important. This process is essentially money in the bank. If you have access to these types of data sources and you can follow through this process in an efficient manner, if it doesn't take you months to get this type of information, Okay, if you can get this information within an hour or two of an IDS alert, you can find out what happened and probably mitigate it before it does a lot of damage to your network. Um, there was a great talk. Ooh, sorry. There was a great talk yesterday, actually. Um, it was a, some folks that were profiling malware and how folks were getting infected. Uh, most of it was user driven and it was based off social engineering sites and whatever was trendy and going on at the time. Uh, those were the guys that had the Playmate of the Year come in. Did anybody else see that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so the guys, again, in that sock that we saw at the beginning, they were looking at their real-time IDS alerts. They may have access to packet capture, but they're probably not the firewall administrators. Any network they can afford a security operations center that looks like that, their firewall administrators are working somewhere else, okay, in a little server closet somewhere. Okay, so you need to get those firewall logs, though, because if you get popped with malware, chances are you might go out and try to download more malware. There are a number of Trojans out there that will do that. Okay, so you want to know if your firewall is blocking those connections. Okay, though if their firewall is dropping them, they may not, depending on where your stuff is placed on your network, that may not trigger on your intrusion detection system. Because if your firewall is dropping it before it gets out to your IDS, you're not going to get an alert. Okay, the proxy log. Where was the user before they got the malware? 
that's where the malware probably came from. Either it was a, you know, a compromised ad that was you know, redirecting them to some hidden iframe and this, that, and the other. There are so many clever ways to get this stuff in now that it's, it's really kind of a, a game to find out where this stuff came from. And getting good at that game makes you really good at doing this. Uh, looking at your antivirus log, again, if your antivirus flags on it, sometimes, because antivirus has a lag, it won't flag when the malware is downloaded to the user system. It only flags after it runs, in some cases. Okay? And when that happens, the malware can still be running in memory and beaconing, even though AV has quarantined the results of the files after they've run. So what happens is you'll end up with a system that's already beaconing, and some AV guy will go look at the log and say, no, Symantec quarantined it, or McAfee quarantined it, and it's done. But the system is still beaconing because it's running in memory. And until the system's rebooted, it's going to continue doing that. So a security operations center, again, being able to have that real-time view of what's going on and have access to all these logs can tell you that that system is still compromised. And while it's still compromised and beaconing, it can continue causing further damage. Uh, looking at your other system logs and all that information, but the big money, talking to the user, especially in malware. Find out what they were doing and what they saw. If you find out what they saw when it was happening, that's, again, a human intrusion detection system signature. You get that information out to your other users. Hey, this is what they saw when they were infected. And that, again, helps tune your other ideas. Yeah, it will, it will provide the education your users need. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. So, all right. <laughs> so actually, I have a little video of just a, a, a grab of a file and then a um, reviewing the data. Uh, it basically following that same procedure we saw for the malware. But I'll just go ahead and show this. And it's a little bit odd the way it goes, but here you go. So we've got, I'm running, uh, I just ran TCP dump uh, manually, but it would be running as a daemon process probably. Um, I'm showing you here on base, uh, there's nothing in there right now. Um, so I've got TCP dump running, watching the network traffic, and I've got this uh, system, this, that TCP dump is running on a virtual machine, this is on a separate machine. So this is a uh, damn vulnerable Linux. Um, they're getting the et cetera password file with a command e execution, so they, they get that file on that Linux system. And uh, now we're going to go back over to base and you'll see as we refresh it that um, there's an alert. Uh, it said our password attempt. I tried to get this thing. So you, you don't know if they got it yet. You just want to see. So you go in here in the base and it's a little bit odd but um, you can see oh they, they posted something from their website or from this website and they, this is what they posted, google.com, and there's some uh, encoding in there, then cat, et cetera, password. Um, so now you need to look at the PCAP. So I actually opened it up. I took it from the dump I was doing. So there's that post right there. Um, and then you want to uh, take a look at the data. There's actually, you can follow the stream with Wireshark, which is a little easier, but I had some trouble with that for some reason. But here it is. You can see the, uh, they, they got that. They got the root. The user been, I mean, it's just the et cetera password. It's not a big deal, too big of a deal. But they got it. They got into the server. Um, so that's the basic idea of what an analyst would do when they need to review an incident. Um, so talking about uh, mitigation, actually before I do that I'm going to show you this other one, uh, I'll show you Chaos Reader real quick. Um, so. so this Chaos Reader is that thing, it's a program, it's a Perl program, it's fantastic. It was written um, a while ago, I don't think it's been updated since 2003 like I said, but it will extract from a PCAP file and um, often will provide images and other great data that will help with uh, figuring out what happened. So, um, see. Yeah, while he's getting that set up, Chaos Reader is an excellent program. It extracts all different facets of known program files from a TCP stream. So it will reconstruct pictures, it will reconstruct emails, executables, any number of things that you want to look at. Um, but he's right, it hasn't been updated in a long time and if anybody's aware of any other open source or free utilities that kind of do the same thing, Network Investigator. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> What's that? Network Miner. Oh, Network yeah. Miner. And please don't say Net Witness because that's Windows only. <laughs> so I'm going to run this. It goes through it, goes through the PCAP, pulls all that stuff out, and it puts it in the directory I specified. There's all these files. It's not the most user friendly, but you start with index.html. And uh, I don't know what that um, So it's kind of rough, but it helps in. The, in uh, quickly, you can see what this user was looking at. They're looking at Sarah Palin. 
on Amazon. They're going to buy her book. You have to stop them. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll get on that quick. You got to go talk to that user. So and uh, this is a great program in terms of like I, I have seen uh, SQL injection attacks, and I can run the network traffic on here, and it will um, it will provide. Uh, this is as HTML right here. It will actually show you. Well, that'll show you what you see in Wireshark. But then, typically, there's often an, uh, the session. There might be another HTML file under there, where which will actually show you what the attacker saw, the actual web page they were looking at. Um, it's pretty great. So there are a lot of great programs. This is just one of them. And uh, go over here to back to this. How do I get back into that? Oh, okay. So mitigation incident response. You want to give a yes. Uh, again, <laughs> user education. I'm going to harp on this again. Your users are your widely, most widely deployed IDS. Typically, they're they're best targeted against things like malware and infections. Um, they're not going to help you if your server is getting SQL injected. However, your your server admins, your programmers. Uh, those folks are the ones that you want to talk to and find out why these things are like that. There's a lot of legacy code sitting around. Uh, there's a lot of insecure PHP running around. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been patched or things that have not been updated. Um, these are the things that need to be looked at. They need to be looked at continuously, but nobody really has the resources to do that. So when we start detecting these kind of things, we want to go out and start educating both the users and the admins on the network and get them more focused on security. Security has to be part of everything we do in networking. Um, again, stop using users' administrative access. While that doesn't necessarily always protect them, it does help limit the amount of damage that can be done um, and limits the amount of subversion that can happen on their system, whether it's undermining antivirus or any other number of uh, mechanisms. Proxy servers and firewalls. Um, one of the best things that we have seen recently is using proxies to block sites. I mean, that works great. It really helps protect users from themselves or from those iframe redirects. Uh, depending on if, if you can use gray listing, if you can use white listing, depending on what types of uh, proxies you have in place. Um, a lot of the more common ones now, like blue coat and whatnot, they're actually really just more like modified versions of. Uh, I just drew a blank. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> oh well. Uh, squid. Squid. Thank you. Oh. Somebody said it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, they're just modified versions of squid. Squid is free. You can run it and you can use it to do the exact same things. It works very well. You can either whitelist your internet access if you're in a very tense environment where you have to really restrict what your users are doing, or you can use a form of blacklisting. And there's a number of other mechanisms out there that will tell you what mal like malware URL is a great example, and there are a number of sites out there that will tell you where the bad neighborhoods on the internet are. Uh, de denying certain types of downloads, block posting and on bad IPs. There's a number of things you can do with your mail servers to stop this stuff. There's a bunch of anti-spam software which will stop a lot of phishing attacks. There's a lot of things that you can do, free, low or no cost, uh, to your infrastructure to make things more secure for your users. So uh, I just have a summary basically. It's, uh, I'll just provide some information that uh, what we went over. There's um, the, s the tools are the best one that I found a lot of people agree is Snort. It's open source. It's fantastic. Uh, if you go to snort.org, you'll see um, uh, they have a download section. They have all those tools I mentioned, pulled pork, barnyard. They have e extra other tools for analysis. They have some great stuff and some great white papers. Um, and uh, you can find some guidelines on setting up your own networks. Uh, I was hoping to provide a step-by-step -step Snort installation guide, but you know there's a million of them out there. And uh, some of them are great and some of them aren't so great, but um, you can just do a search and you'll find it. Um, if you have questions, uh, come see us in Capri 112. And here's our emails too. I don't know if you want to say anything, Chris? No, I'm good. All right. Thank you. We're ending a little early. Thanks a lot. <laughs>